Hey guys, James Reeves with TFB TV. I'm at the Sig Sauer Academy with my good buddy Jason St. John. We are talking about some new Sig cans. We have the full rundown. You guys <laughs> saw me and my miscreant friend John Hollister at Shot Show, uh, January 2020. We did a little rundown of the Mod X and some of the new titanium cans, but everything at that point was kind of vague. There was a lot in the ether and we've nailed down some details at this point. So Jason, walk us through the line of the kind of the next generation of pistol and rifle cans that we have coming from SIG. Yeah, and I think that before we really get into the specifics on each individual can, let's just kind of talk about where SIG Sauer's going with their cans, you know. So um, you, as you know, probably talking to John, you know, we've stepped away from the traditional um, stacked baffle, welded baffle, velocity, or you know, suppressor stack inside of a sleeve, welded, um, suppressors. We've moved now to 100% additive manufacturing, so we're, we're printing all of our cans. Uh, main reason on this is it gives us a lot of ability to use some very unique geometries, and then really as we get into talking about the cans, one of the impetuses of those. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we'll kind of just start out with the Mod X can, the pistol can. And let's, let's, let's pump our brakes real quick, because I mean, I think that you just kind of rolled over a pretty significant point. What you're saying is Sig Sauer is not going to make any more traditional welded baffle tube designs. It's all gonna be, you say additive manufacturing, that's fancy talk for 3D printing more yep, or less, more right? Or less, yeah, yep. yeah and, and you guys are, are done with the traditional uh, suppressor moving forward. Yep, we are, but you know, we still honor every, the, all the SRD lines and stuff oh, that see, we have out cool. there, that of course. Was, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, that, we're was, not, that was like We're not next. moving away from the aspect of if you have an SRD can like, you're, you know, you're F high you, and dry. Yeah, yeah, you, you're, you're still done. gonna service, you're gonna still, service the legacy cans, but you guys are moving in this direction. With, without a doubt without a doubt. But yeah, we're, we're evolving to 100% of our line being additive from this point forward. Very cool. Let's roll right into the pistol can. Yeah, so when we, we talk about the pistol can line, we talk about our Mod X can. Um, again, this is additive manufacturing. Uh, one of the really unique things about our, our Mod X line is that the Mod X line is actually threaded baffles. So these are all printed individual threaded baffles and it allows you to uh, configure the suppressor in any length that you want to utilize it with. Instead of having, you know, a, a, an eight and a half, nine inch pistol suppressor that's really hard to wield, we can put it down to five baffles. We can put it all the way down to three baffles. Of course, as you, as you shorten the, the suppressor itself, you're gonna see that obviously your decibel level, your flash level, there's compromises in that. But you know you can knock quite a bit of quite a bit of recoil, quite a bit of flash, and quite a bit of sound off on a nine mil with a three baffle can. But you know you can you can configure this to as long or as short as that you you want to have have the have the can. Uh, the Mod X cans available in nine mil and forty five. Pistol cans in general have always kind of had an uh, you've kind of have to take a compromise with with accuracy with them. So one of the important things that we want to do with the Mod X can and with the additive manufacturing, the consistency of that was we really wanted to dial in and focus on accuracy. So we've had a lot of very strong results with the Mod X can mounted on a pistol, not affecting accuracy or minimally affecting it. So that's a, that's a really pretty big movement in pistol cans, specifically from our perspective. This this can is is wonderful on the MPX. So you can take the booster out, direct thread it to your, direct thread it to your MPX, knocks the decibel level way down, minimally affects accuracy. You know, I think we enhance slightly and we maintain the, the same level of accuracy that you're used to without a, a suppressor on your gun. Um, so that was one of the big important things. So even though I said we've moved away from the welded stacked baffle design, our pistol cans are a modular, you know, they're a modular sure. Baffle system, which would allow the end user to. I mean, essentially, you can take off the end cap and oh, you can take off as many baffles as you want. And then at some point, you're giving up uh, uh, well, at some point, at any point, when yep. you remove one of those, you're giving up suppression, but you're gaining uh, I was gonna say gaining light weightedness, <laughs> which is well, the opposite of you're, you're losing weight, you're shedding weight. Well, you're doing a couple of things, right? So, you know, with the can, so, you know, we can run it all the way down on a pistol to a three baffle stack there. And so obviously you're gonna compromise in sound, you're gonna compromise in, in flash, mm -hmm. um, but what you're gonna get is you're gonna gain, you know, in, um, you know, maneuverability, operability, uh, ease of use in comparison to having a nine inch can on the end of your pistol. Um, you know, I, 
I've run that can all the way down to three baffles on a 365, and that's mm -hmm. really kind of a neat little mm -hmm. gun to have, sure. right? So I, I knock a lot of sound off of it and take care of a lot of the flash that I would have if it wasn't suppressed, and now I have a small suppress on a really an everyday concealed carry, you know, uh, pistol. So Where's the sweet spot for this thing? Like how many baffles are we talking for if, if we want the ultimate compromise, like the most efficient between weight and, and internal volume. Eight baffles yeah. is, is how they're delivered. And then, you know, with eight baffle design, you're gonna find out that you have the same standard, you know, 142 to five decibel range with, with, with the pistol cam. Um, and then as obviously you come back one baffle at a time if you want and find mm -hmm. out what you what you prefer. What works for you, right. You know, because, you know, even, even you know, maybe someone doesn't want all the sound and all the flash and optimize it from a suppressible standpoint. You've shot plenty of suppressed pistols. They're unwieldy mm -hmm. you know like they're 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 fun to shoot mm -hmm. um, sure. but you know they're they're not awkward. any yeah they're awkward that's just how it is right and so you know if you you know you put that on your pistol right there that you got beside you and you can see it you know it I really will. now you know it doesn't distract from the ability that that weapon system you know as far as it's handling characteristics say the same as if you had another five inches of baffle on there sure you know now it's not going to be hearing safe at that level but i mean significantly significantly quieter you know, you don't walk around the world with earplugs in, right? You go to the range, you put earplugs in, you know, you have this sitting around, you know, at the house. Now you can actually utilize it and, you know, don't have to worry about earplugs per se. You know, it takes a big, takes a big bite out of that. Significantly. I smell <laughs> what you're stepping in. I see where you're going, JSJ. What yeah. you're trying to do, subliminal messages to the viewers. I am, I'm assuming this is a Nielsen device here in the back. Yep, booster. Yep. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. booster. And yep, it's, yep. I mean, very, very slim and trim. Uh, and then, you know, that. that comes off, take that out of there, and then, you know, direct thread, put it on your MPX. Mm -hmm. And then now you've got, you know, obviously one of the most entertaining and fun guns to shoot, a suppressed MPX, you know, shooting 147 sure. grain subsonic yeah. ammo. It's, it's just giggles and laughs at that time, right? Yeah, absolutely. And when, how much, and what is the Tetris pattern that I just <laughs> you know <laughs> noticing? <laughs> yeah, you know, it, obviously that's for taking weight out and still maintaining mm -hmm. structural strength. Oh, cool. You know, but it is, it is pretty... You know, you know, sci-fi, like you yeah. said, Tetris is a really good example, you know. And uh, so the Mod X suppressor is taking orders right now, ready, mm -hmm. ready to deliver. Um, and you're looking 8 to 850. Uh -huh. you know, don't hammer me down, but, you know, right in that range, that's going to be plus or minus a little bit there. So, um, but yeah, we're, we're ready to deliver. Not, to, not to, to belabor the selling point of it, but we, you know, we have a lot of uh, interest and we've, we've got a pretty specific military end user that's, that's in this suppressor mm -hmm. already and they they were happy with it you know again the modularity for the end user right let's roll on let's talk about these yeah new so rifle let's cans. let's move into the rest of our printed cans so if you look at it we have our slh line our slx line i'm going to go through each one of them and kind of talk about uh, some of the good things about them so our slh slx and slh line our slx line works best with high pressure ammunitions and our slh works with subsonic ammunitions if we look at the slx line as i stated a second ago this works um, primarily um, with it works it's optimized with high pressure or high pressure ammunitions um, it actually will increase a little bit of decibel level if you use a little bit more of a subsonic um, ammunition just because of how it was designed specifically and vice versa with the um, SLH line we've got the brand new SLH can hooked up to an MCX and 300 blackout I've got five supersonic rounds sitting on top of this mag I'm and sorry we're not filming you son of a bitch let's do it again Come on. So I've got the brand new SIG SLH can sitting on an MCX 300 blackout. In this mag, we got five supers on the top, we got five subs on the bottom. So the first five shots you're gonna hear are gonna be supersonic rounds. That means they're moving faster than the speed of sound. So they're gonna make a little bit of a sonic crack, or at least they should. The 300 blackout rounds, the five after that are gonna be subsonic, which I think are going to impress you. Let's find out. Ready? Pretty neat. So, you know, ideally they'll work with both ammo types, but you'll see a little bit of a trade off with one if you get away from what's optimized for each one. The other aspect of our design is we're, is we're trying to manage flash. Um, with the titanium, you may have a little bit more flash than the Inconel. But if you look on the design, the design on this is, is designed to disperse flash um, with the main goal being that we're trying to minimize flash to the level of an AR, an AR or an M4 with the birdcage. So um, we're trying to get to that area and I believe we've done quite well with that. Sound level, um, 
I mean, it's just going to be within the industry standard. All these things really vary between barrel length, ammo type, pressure of the round, powder, et cetera, et cetera, when it comes to flash and sound. But ideally, we're in that 142 to 145 decibel range. With additive manufacturing, we've moved away from the uh, per baffle, welded sleeve, welded baffle design. So this is, this is printed from, from ground up, so it's one solid design. We get a lot more consistency with it. We get a lot better performance with it. Um, so that's, that's a, an added benefit. Um, if you look at the, how they mount, um, we do have an adapter that allows you to go into a direct thread design as well, um, but we have our clutch lock. Our clutch lock system allows a high level of repeatability from suppressor on, suppressor off. Um, within the mount itself, we got a taper that centers and also provides a gas seal into the um, suppressor, um, keeping all of the carbon and all the particulates from getting into the mechanism itself. So I think the I think we've gone five plus thousand rounds without taking the suppressor off. Kind of anecdotally, we've gone 5,000 rounds without taking the suppressor off. And uh, our test techs were like, hey, you're never going to get that can off. And just simply went to unlock, put a little pressure on it, and she popped right, right, right loose. Yeah, so the clutch lock design is really as, as a series of three cams in here. And then as you rotate it into the lock position, those cams rotate into contact with the bearing surface of, of the mount itself. And as you try to uh, loosen that, those cams continue to bite into the bearing surface so it only really self tightens upon itself. And then when you unlock it, it just pulls those cams free. Um, again, you know, with the taper lock and the design of the clutch lock, on off repeatability is, is, is very, very consistent uh, with, with, with very, very minimal zero shift. Okay, so with our clutch lock system, you notice that there's a taper on the mount. Uh, what that does is that aligns the suppressor, allows it to be concentric with the bore, and then also provides a seal to ensure that the ga gas particulates don't get back into the clutch lock mechanism. You can see the effectiveness of the seal on this mount. If you look at the three prong mount, you can see the carbon build up around it, and then behind the, behind the taper lock, you notice there's no carbon or anything like that. So that enables us to you know, leave the suppressor. I'm not recommending leaving it on long term, but allows it to be on long term without locking up. Those that have a lot of experience with suppressors have probably encountered you know, the, the suppressor being a little bit harder to get off. Understanding that that's a possibility. We've also put um, wrench index marks and a wrench comes with the suppressor so that in the event that you either you over tighten it, but you know, we get a little gorilla grip on there and really get after it or maintenance issues and you leave it on there longer than you need to. It comes with a wrench mounts on the system and you can break it loose quite easily. The wrench also can be used if for some reason the, the suppressor is extremely hot and you want to get it off the weapon system, put the wrench on and you can get it off. Yeah, our XLX line and our SLH line bring a lot of technology from a program that we were awarded through the U.S. military that provided a lot of emphasis on toxic blowback gases. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you've shot, you know, if, if, if your viewers, obviously, that are familiar with suppressors and, and they've shot them quite a bit, you know, I, I guess it's always like a badge of honor. You come back and your face is black. Mm -hmm. You know, CLP, carbon, everything getting blowback in your faces. Yeah. Your eyes are watering, you know, and you're like, man, that was a great time, but really not the best for your health. Um, you know, those gases contain, among other things, you know, hydrogen cyanide, you know, ammonia, you know, carbon monoxide, et cetera, you know, as well as sulfur and other particulates that come back with the gunpowder, lead, mm -hmm. um, and those types of things. So, you know, probably, you know, ideally not to get that in your eye or breathe it in. So the, the really horizon wish list goal was to put a suppressor on an M4 and have it be less than a M4 without a suppressor. Mm -hmm. And of course, at the time, everyone's like, man, I, this, how? It's not possible. Uh, we put a lot of time and effort, money, really worked on the flow dynamics within the design. This is one of the impetuses that really drove us to additive manufacturing. We were already in that field, but it allows us so, such a, uh, you know, so much leeway in internal design and being able to drive the gases the way that we want to drive them. And then, you know, what that did is that we actually met the goal in that program and we exceeded the parts per million of an unsuppressed M4 mm -hmm. with a suppressed M4. And so bringing, like I said, that military technology to the commercial user, bringing that professional product and putting it in the hands of the, uh, of the commercial user is, uh, is, is a very important part of our business plan. So we're bringing military technology to the end user through our SLX and SLH cans. Alistair told me at, at SHOT Show, uh, I think I understand what he was saying now. He said that uh, shooting these cans was actually good for me. It was, it was, was good healthy. for you. Yeah, yeah, that, that's something uh, that Alistair would say. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. It's like a, essential least. oil, more yeah. or less for the gun guy. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing real quick on our, on our line is, 
you know, we put a lot of emphasis on, on flash. Um, so we've designed, you know, our, our end caps here to minimize the flash as much as we possibly can as well. Uh, the SLX line and the SLH line both come in titanium and Inconel. Mm -hmm. Titanium's got a history of sparking, so there's a little bit more spark that's going on that. We're working some angles to try to eliminate that, and we think we're close to, you know, having some pretty decent solutions that either minimize it or completely eliminate it, but I don't want to get ahead of ourselves on that. Um, really the benefit, you know, for the end user is Inconel's heavier, titanium's lighter, you like to have that lighter one. Inconel handles higher pressure, higher volume, more torturous firing, more durable than the, ti the titanium, which would make sense, right? Was not expecting that, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm rolling here. Um, but the SLX line is designed for high pressure uh -huh. um, and actually performs better at high pressure. If you, you know, and then the SLH line is going to, they'll both handle the pressure, but the SLH line is designed and performs significantly better with subsonic. Mm -hmm. And this one runs significantly better with supersonic. That said, they both can run them. It's sure. just going to see What's the difference like, between the two? What? Oh, decibels. A decibel here and a decibel. Uh -huh. This actually is, is, is quieter with supersonic than mm -hmm. subsonic. Mm -hmm. And that one's quieter with subsonic, the SLH, than it was a supersonic. But we're talking two decibels. Okay, so I'm trying to wrap my head around what makes them different then. The performance is different. Um, it's going to be internal baffle design. Okay. It has nothing to that's do with purely materials. That, it, yep, so, to do, see, that's really cool. Yeah. That, so with, 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 our, with our computational flow uh -huh. analysis, we're able to drive tweaks within the, so within the baffle design so that we can optimize that for subsonic performance and we can optimize this for supersonic performance. So when now I'm, they're not. What I want to make sure I clarify is this isn't just a subsonic can, obviously, and this isn't just a obviously it's, it's, it's optimized. optimized. For one, yeah, and I think yep. that that's relatively clear. What what was confusing to me is I'm sitting there uh, trying to figure it out. Like you, while you're talking, I'm, I'm like, well, what the hell is the difference? Right? You have the X, which is the high pressure. It's optimized for high yep. pressure, or I can get the H. I can get the exact same can, more or less. Uh, minus the baffle design, I can decide whether or not I want it to be optimized for high pressure or uh, rather supersonic or subsonic. Correct. Minor differences, but you know, two decibels makes a difference here. And sure. Tonal qualities of what you hear and those things also make a difference. Right. And if you can do it, um, why not? How much are these going to cost? Oh, this is a compound question. I'm testing you now, JSJ. What calibers? How much are they going to cost? When? So um, all of them are available in five, five, six, and thirty cal. Mm -hmm. You know, so we don't have a specific six, eight cal. You right, know, we run thirty right. cal and five, five, six. You know, there's going to be differences. We took a five, five, six, four inch can and a thirty cal, eight inch can, but you know, we're starting at around nine hundred dollars. You know, you know, increase sure. from there. It's not astronomical. It's definitely competitive within where we're at. You know, and it's. It's a complete paradigm shift in where we where we were and where we're going. And when we're talking about SLH and SLX and optimize for this and that, and it does get murky at times, that's what that additive manufacturing brings to the table is those minor tweaks and rather than, sure. you know, than, than the, the traditional. Uh, Last thing, do you know anything about lifespan of these? Like how many rounds are we getting through these things before we, we wear them out? I know obviously that varies from Inconel to titanium. Do we have any and, idea? And really the only experience that I can give you on that is on our SLX in our 6.8 for our next gen program. Mm -hmm. We're at 10,000 rounds. Okay, 10,000. Well, and you're you're saying you're at 10,000 yep. and it needs to be replaced or you're at 10,000 right now in the testing? Ideally, I would say that we're at ten thousand, and you're in the you're in the neighborhood of having to replace it. Okay, you know, all right. So, and, and is that one the titanium or the in canal? That one is the in canal. Okay, all right. Yeah. Very interesting. JSJ, I told you before this video started that we had questions from viewers, mm -hmm. our Patreon supporters, subscribe star supporters. By the way, guys, we have all the fun and games on Patreon and subscribe star. It's a viewer support thing. Yep, like yep. people can go on if you're familiar with it uh, and support us. So we kind of. Uh, had a poll and we asked everybody what do you want to see from SIG this was one of the more popular things people wanted to know about when these next gen cans were coming the specs so I really appreciate you getting on here answering our viewers questions and being on TFB TV I know being on YouTube isn't the the best way to spend a Friday <laughs> but if I'm gonna do it goddamn I want to do it with you JSJ. Well, thank you and I think when your viewers get a chance they're gonna see that a, just a vast improvement in suppressor performance with our suppressor line 
you know, just specific to where we were, let alone our competitors. Can't wait to get my test copy. All right, appreciate Thanks you, Thanks as usual. Thank you. Guys, appreciate stay you. tuned. We're bringing you more from SIG.